finally shut down this highly polluting plutonium weapons facility in Colorado with the extent of contamination still withheld. In numbers further than the eye can see, protesting Washington State sub-bases. They call it the Nuclear Corridor, a thousand missile silos scattered over many thousands of square miles of our land. In each cluster here there are hundreds. Each red dot represents from a couple to fifteen missile silos. You have to get out there to appreciate the size, the scope of this vast program. It includes the expenditure of billions of dollars. Over 100,000 contractor employees at the missile sites have worked more than 50 million man days since ground was first broken. A cross-section of industry must mingle with a cross-section of skills in a way not equaled in any previous undertaking. Behind the fencing and up close, the small hatch doors are barely visible. Launcher doors weighing 40 tons each. What lies beneath? These and hundreds of launch control centers, also just seemingly a small outdoor structure, have miles of apparatus unseen deep in Earth. A control center has nearly 4,000 miles of electrical circuitry. Meanwhile, through the decades, hundreds of groups of brave, dedicated citizens have continued practicing in aware presence, witnessing so we may be informed, gathering in prayer, and keeping vigilance with the hopes others of us might awake someday. With the Vietnam War over, the War Resisters League organized the Continental Walk for Disarmament and Social Justice. It called for the shifting of economic priorities away from militarism and toward meeting domestic and global human needs. They marched from California to our capital, covered 8,000 miles over 10 months through 34 states. Some were arrested on charges of walking in the roadway. On the final day in October, 700 reached the Pentagon. 53 were arrested for failing to disperse. The then U.S. President Gerald Ford refused the request to meet and made a speech the next day denouncing all those who urged cutting nuclear weapon expenditures. Joining in organizing was the Fellowship of Reconciliation, the American Friends Service Committee, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the Catholic Peace Fellowship, Clergy and Laity Concerned, SANE, and the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. On Easter Sunday, Father Phil Bergen and others disarmed two Tomahawk missiles at Norfolk Naval Base. He was arrested again, and while in prison he wrote, The shameless and miserable failure of world institutions, governments, churches, media, campuses, to expose nuclear lunacy and to propose human alternatives. Clearly the government took strenuous measures to prevent military personnel and all of us from knowing the truth about nuclear insanity. Truth and war are inimical. No war-making government can tolerate the luxury of an informed and critical public. I do not claim that anyone knows the whole truth, but what does one need to know? If these weapons are not immoral, evil, unjust, and anti-human, then nothing is. We must ponder the reality of 150 million tons of radioactive garbage in the stratosphere from testing, sifting into the air, water, and soil. We must scrutinize our willingness to pay for these hellish weapons. What does it cost us spiritually, while calling it the price of freedom? The task is staggering in scope and complexity. Each week, the workers of America, with industry and their government, are delivering at least one new missile site in defense of the free world. The Atlas is deployed operationally, ready for instant nuclear retaliation. Its political cost? 
How many governments do Americans now have? The elected one, the commercial and financial one, the gumshoe one, and the secret team one. Watch the pharaohs choose between their people and the bomb. They will choose the bomb. In fact, they have done so already. A launcher must be delivered and installed on schedule. The part manufactured in Phoenix, Arizona, must align perfectly in the field near Salina, Kansas, with another part produced in San Diego, California. We don't have to take the betrayal and poison and hostage ship to the bomb. We can raise our voices, invest our bodies in a huge, resounding, unequivocal public no and a sacred yes to life. Several years earlier. May we do something to prevent that which would cause nuclear ash. In this trial reenactment, Father Dan Bergen of the Plowshares 8, they were tried and jailed for entering a General Electric plant and slightly damaging property, a nuclear warhead. Property certainly refers to whatever enhances, nourishes, cherishes, builds human life or human community. Now, strangely, in this courtroom, you're going to hear that noble word applied to those horrors. These are the hammers that will break the world to bits. Those things have nothing to do with what is proper to human beings. They are anti-property. To take responsibility for these things, to call them by their right name, which is murder, death, genocide. These things belong to someone. They belong to us. They are ours. They do not belong in our world. We are going to be responsible for them. I would like to leave with you, friends and jurors, that great and noble word, which is our crime, responsibility.